summer is all about fun, especially for our children, which often means that more of them use our roads to get to those fun activities. So expect to see them out riding their bicycles, playing on the streets or crossing the roads. Unfortunately, sometimes without paying attention to what they're doing. That's why we here at the JIS implore you to watch out for the little ones as you go about your business. Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. We kickstart this Monday's show with Tamara McHale as she brings us the latest stories coming out of our news desk. <laughs> I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, July 21. As drought conditions continue to affect the island, government is taking immediate action to cushion the effects, especially for those worst affected. In a statement to the nation Sunday, Water Minister Robert Pickersgill outlined plans that include getting water to farmers quickly. We have redeployed 40 trucks, several of them to the most critical areas such as Clarendon, and our bread basket parish, St. Elizabeth, where farmers are reeling under the drought. These trucks will continue to service these areas until normal rainfall is restored. We have also provided an allocation to the parish councils and to the members of parliament to deal with the trucking of water. Additionally, the National Water Commission, NWC, is moving to rapidly fix leaks affecting the water distribution system. I'm imploring all members of the public to report all leaks, and I have given instructions to the NWC to establish two leak hotlines, as well as text messaging services. The leak hotline numbers are 733-5655 and 733-5656. The number for you to text to report leaks is 838-LEAK or 838-5325. The public is reminded that the country remains under a prohibition notice, which makes it illegal for persons to waste water or to use excessive amounts of NWC supplied water in drought-affected areas. So far this year, government has spent $85 million on the trucking of water under the Rapid Response Program. Meanwhile, the National Water Commission, NWC, is taking steps to minimize water shortages in the future. It's just one of the objectives of the NWC's artificial groundwater recharge system for the Rio Cobra Hydrological Basin. On Friday, the NWC signed a contract valued at approximately $1 billion to build the system in the Innswood area of St. Catherine. It will include the construction of raw water intake structures, installation of two kilometers of pipeline, construction of inlet structures to two infiltration wells and three sinkholes. Additionally, a raw water treatment facility will be built with the capacity to treat 8 million gallons of water per day, generally increasing groundwater quantity and quality. So this aquifer recharge project is absolutely vital to the water security of St. Catherine and to the Kingston metropolitan area. The Groundwater Recharge Project is funded by the NWC through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank. M&M Jamaica Limited is the contractor with supervision from the Rural Water Supply Limited. The Health Ministry is assuring the public that there are measures in place to prevent the spread of the chikungunya virus. The Ministry's Director of Emergency Disaster Management and Special Services Dr. Marion bullock Decas, says the measures include increased surveillance. Which means that we have contacted our healthcare facilities, both in the public and private sector, to remind persons to report all cases that are displaying signs and symptoms of chikungunya. Speaking at a GIS think tank Friday, Dr. Bullock de Kaas said the ministry had ramped up its vector control program and had increased fogging in areas where the individual with the only confirmed case lives or had visited. We conduct what we call a blitz operation meaning that we do three consecutive nights of fogging to kill any adult mosquitoes which might be in the area, as well as the other larvicidal work. And we also look for breeding sites and destroy them. 
the health ministry is also embarking on an intense island-wide public education campaign to curtail the spread of chikungunya, mainly by destroying mosquito breeding sites. In the meantime, the ministry has reminded healthcare workers how to identify chikungunya, increase laboratory capacity to deal with tests, and continue to screen and alert visitors from countries with confirmed cases should they have signs and symptoms of the virus. Cabinet is to receive by September the first report on the work being done by the Electricity Sector Enterprise Team, ESET. ESET Chairman Dr. Vin Lawrence gave the update at the first anniversary retreat of the Partnership for Jamaica National Council held Thursday at Jamaica House. Having held seven meetings, Dr. Lawrence said ESET was preparing a rapid assessment least cost expansion plan, which would outline recommendations beyond satisfying the current electricity needs of the country. In the meantime, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller called on the Council to stay the course in order to achieve national growth and development. We must sharpen our focus on the way forward. We must seek to remove the obstacles to effective implementation, accelerating the growth agenda. I urge us to take note of some of the critical developments at this time in the life of our country. And finally, approximately 4,900 young people are getting valuable work experience as part of the National Youth Service NYS Summer Program this year. The NYS has teamed up with several hundred partners from small and medium-sized entities to large companies such as Sandals, the Jamaica Public Service, and Sagicor. Omar Newell, Director of Community Services at the National Youth Service, says they hope to achieve a number of objectives through the program. What we hope to achieve is a, a cohort of summer program participants who are better aware of what it is, what work is. Um, we're hoping that the participants will, will leave the program not just with a stipend that we pay at the end of the three week, but also with meaningful relationships. We're hoping that our participants will have meaningful interactions and will leave with mentors and lifelong relationships that will help in their professional development. Participants are so far pleased with the experience. It's a very efficient program concerning youth. It's a good opportunity for youth to be engaged in something to positive to take up their time. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McKeel. Thank you for watching. When you use the road, you need to be aware of how your action affects others. I grow on the car. Only to see a man stop on a big road, but some people are crossing on a blind corner. When motorists have to stop on the green light to allow people to cross, it creates problems. People just can't walk out on the road, some man. From a corner, from behind vehicle, they need to be more careful, man. We have overhead bridges, pedestrian crossings, and crosswalks. Some of them even have signals to tell you when to cross. People. Walk on the sidewalk. If there is none, walk on the right side. And please, if you can't find a pedestrian crossing, make sure the road clear before you cross. Drivers need for drive good. But pedestrian need for walk good too. Walk good. The ministers at Jamaica House made several rounds this past week. Take a look. National Partnership Council holds first anniversary retreat. Prime Minister encourages them to keep pressing for progress. Visually impaired cricketers get government support. And work on Sabina Park lighting project progressing smoothly. With this week's Jamaica House Weekly, I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller convened the first anniversary retreat for the Partnership for Jamaica National Council at Jamaica House last Thursday. She used the occasion to thank council members for their loyal service and encourage them to continue to work towards progress for all. I look forward to the full participation of each member. I look forward to some specific outcomes in terms of important steps to be agreed on and taken. I also expect that at the end of this process, we will have adopted measures which will improve the work of the council itself, 
and the extension of the partnership model in other areas of our governance. And in a statement following the retreat, Jamaica House announced that Cabinet would, by September, receive the first report on the work being done by the Electricity Sector Enterprise Team, ESET. ESET Chairman Dr. Vin Lawrence made the disclosure as he updated members of the National Partnership Council. Mr. Lawrence told the Council that the team had met seven times and were engaged in preparing a rapid assessment leased cost expansion plan. The plan would outline recommendations beyond satisfying the current electricity needs of the country. Dr. Lawrence also informed the Council that ESET would assume full authority in finding a suitable licensee for the 360 megawatt project. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller will join members of the lower and upper houses of Parliament Wednesday in a special sitting to pay tribute to former Governor-General Sir Howard Cook. Sir Howard passed away on Friday, July 11 at the age of 98. He will be accorded a state funeral to be held on August 8 at the Holy Trinity Cathedral in Kingston. Jamaica nice, give me a little curry goat with white rice. Ginger pimen, just kill him, time give me spice. Jamaica nice. The Prime Minister was in festival mode when she received a courtesy call from the 2014 contestants of the Miss Jamaica Festival Queen competition. The Prime Minister encouraged the contestants to be ambassadors for the country and join in the push to protect the nation's children. Miss Kingston and St. Andrew walked away with the top prize on Saturday night. In sport, Mrs. Simpson-Miller presented a check worth $1.52 million to the Jamaica Visually Impaired Cricket Association Tuesday. The money will go towards hosting the 7th Regional Visually Impaired Cricket Tournament, which began last Friday. It ends this Thursday, July 24. At Tuesday's courtesy call, Mrs. Simpson-Miller described the cricketers as an inspiration. She said their hard work and determination demonstrated that anything was possible. Following last week's handing over ceremony for the final installment of grant funding for the Sabina Park Lighting Project, Minister Responsible for Sport, Natalie Nita Headley, toured the park to get a first-hand look at the work being done. We are extremely pleased with the progress made so far. Um, all, if, if not most, if not all, of the equipment to be installed um, are currently here and work is progressing steadily. We also have two backup standby generators in the event that anything should go wrong with, with JPSCO. We'll never be out of electricity here at Sabina Park um, when the need arises. The minister said she was looking forward to the project being completed within budget and in time for the July 31 official commissioning of the lights. The 2.7 million US dollar project will allow for the staging of night matches and is a partnership involving the Indian government, the Tourism Enhancement Fund and the government of Jamaica. And Minister Headley used her story of overcoming all odds on her road to success to encourage primary, secondary and tertiary students from St. Catherine on Wednesday. Those days when you got to school off of the country bus, I tell people it's not where you're coming from or what you take for get there. Today nobody knows we take country bus or I walk for 10 miles. Yes? It's what you would have made of your life and the success you're going to make of your life. And that's how we close today's edition of Jamaica House Weekly. We return next week with the latest news from the office of the Prime Minister. Commuters, travel the route to excellence. Get your new JUTC Smarter Card today. It's not only safer, it'll also have you boarding faster and get you on your way quicker. Cards are available at JUTC sales offices, the JUTC Lay-By in St. Catherine, the JUTC Halfway Tree Transport Center, and the East Parade office in Kingston. Print and collect your own ticket. Find the value in the JUTC Smarter Card. It's the smart way to go. Nutritious food. Succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Original. Mark 
these days on your calendar, July 26 and 27, because you're in for a music and art-filled weekend thanks to the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, the JCDC. On Saturday, July 26, grab a seat at the Rani Williams Entertainment Center in Kingston for the Jamaica Festival Song Competition Finals. Come see who will join the likes of Toots Hibbert, Desmond Decker, Roy Rayon and Eric Donaldson as winner of the Jamaica Festival Song Competition. And be sure to clear your calendar for Sunday, July 27 as it will be fully booked. In the morning, the National Independence Thanksgiving service will be held at the Church of the Open Bible in Kingston. By mid-afternoon, the National Gallery of Jamaica on the Kingston waterfront should be your destination of choice as the gallery celebrates 40 years with a special showing. And at 7 o'clock, it's back to the Randy Williams Entertainment Center for the Jamaica Gospel Song Competition National Finals. I'll be there to enjoy every minute of Jamaica Festival 2014. Will you? Each time you're not paying full attention to the road environment, the greater your chances of getting in a crash like that. Plan routes to avoid focusing on GPS systems, prevent children from roaming in motor vehicles, turn down the volume of car stereo systems, pull off the roadway if you have to use mobile devices, do not read, watch television or eat while driving, avoid multitasking and keep conversations with other passengers to a minimum. Whether you walk, ride or drive, avoid potentially fatal distractions. Here are some tips to live by when dealing with one of our most vulnerable road users, our children. Life in any form is a gift too precious to measure. The birth of brand new possibilities and exciting potential for whatever. For those at the early stages of this journey, it is expected that the ones who are older, those in positions of guardianship, will take the steps necessary to ensure their safety in all areas, not least of all as they travel from one destination to another. I think every single adult who is a driver has a tremendous responsibility, um, not only for the safety of children, but the safety of other drivers, pedestrians. Um, driving comes with a tremendous responsibility, and it's up to you to remain alert, um, particularly when it comes to children. Um, we are their guardians. Children are among our most vulnerable road users. It's why the Ministry of Transport and Works, and particularly the Road Safety Unit, has spent time coming up with measures to ensure that the traffic environment for them is as safe as possible. The law comes down very heavily on the side of children uh, when we act irresponsibly, and as a result, they are injured. Laws like the Road Traffic Act the Child Care and Protection Act and the Protective Devices legislation speak to the issue in some way. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I want drivers to stop and I am at the pedestrian crossing. Drivers who ignore the prompting of a traffic warden to stop before reaching the place where children are crossing or seeking to cross, or who put the vehicle in motion before the children have completely crossed the road, commit an offense under the Road Traffic Act. 
Did you know that the Road Traffic Act makes it an offense for you to transport a child in your vehicle without the proper restraints? Breaching this law could place you before a resident magistrate facing a fine upon conviction. A child should never be moving in a moving vehicle. Um, they should be completely still, they should be seated because the car can come to a sudden stop and they will get hurt. If the child is under five years of age, then they need to be in their car seat or a booster. If the child is a little um, bigger than a car seat, um, then there are boosters provided that the, the children should occupy. You should ensure that the um, car safe lock is on, that the windows are turned up, or at least even if the windows have to be down, that the children are not exposing their hands, their heads, um, any parts of their body um, outside of the, the car because that, that is extremely dangerous. But you have to be focused fully on the road, both eyes fully engaged ahead of you. There are times when you might feel sleepy because you're on a long journey, you have not rested well the previous night. Um, you, there are things that you can do. You make use of rest stops. You, if you start feeling a little drowsy, you get out of the car, stop the car, get out of the car, and get some fresh air that usually wakes you up. Drivers need to slow down in front of school. Legislation is being drafted to designate certain areas as school zones where motorists will be required to cut their speed during specified time frames. That's just one of several measures being tackled to ensure that children are protected as part of the Road Safety Unit's aggressive move to enforce the national road safety policy. The unit also plans to deliver the road safety message to at least 130 primary schools every year with intentions to roll out the initiative in secondary and tertiary institutions. And there are plans to ensure that road safety is entrenched in the curriculum of secondary schools. The Ministry of Transport and Works is also doing its part to ensure that pedestrian crossings are maintained, sidewalks are provided, and appropriate signs are installed including at designated school zones. Is your silence worth the life of a child? Report child abuse. Call the Office of the Children's Registry at 1-888-PROTECT. Be the change. Speak out. Protect our children. Summertime is usually a busy time for most, with lots of activities and events taking place. With the children out of school and many who were going on vacation, there's an increase in road usage, which makes it more likely for certain incidents to occur. Play your part in securing your safety and those around you. Keep alert. Using a cell phone or playing loud music while driving are distractions which may impede your judgment. 
for long journeys to town or country. Leave out a little earlier so you won't feel the need to speed to get to your destination. Be vigilant and aware of your surroundings, looking out for pedestrians, pedal cyclists, and other vulnerable road users. Remember, the summer can either be filled with fond memories or marred by a preventable tragedy. So be careful as you use our roads. It keeps our bodies working. Our food nutritious, our living and working spaces clean and our lives comfortable. Water the most precious resource necessary for the sustenance of life on our planet. Don't waste it. Let's conserve on this critical commodity. In the house, invest in storage containers and buckets. Take quick showers instead of long baths and invest in water-efficient shower heads, toilets and faucets. You may also want to consider one-pot meals and cooking methods that don't require much water. You could also wash fruits and vegetables in a bowl and reuse the water on your plants or grass. When cleaning dishes, fill both sinks and use one for washing and the other for rinsing. The leftover water can be used to wash off the concrete or asphalt in your yard. If you must wash your car at home, aim for once a fortnight and use a bucket to do the washing instead of running the hose. Don't delay. Start your water conservation practices today. And that's our show. Let's keep the communication flowing. Email us, jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm or visit us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Jamaica Information Service. You may also view this and other magazine programs online, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson, reminding you to take care as you walk, ride and drive on our nation's roads. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.